everyone, it's John from What Up. Welcome back to another video. And this is another Wheel of Time News Roundup. So essentially we're taking all of the Wheel of Time news over the last couple of weeks that doesn't quite fit into their own videos and kind of cramming it all together to talk about it here today. So I'm gonna go through the extra castings, the stuff you see up here on the screen. We're gonna go through all those new book covers, both the Orbit and the Tor ones. And they've kind of become infam infamous to some people at this point. And we're gonna talk a bit about those. Then we're gonna talk about a possible release date or time frame within November at the very end and where that came from. So we're gonna do all of this. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna talk just a little bit about my 10,000 subscribers contest how you can enter and we'll show another trailer of uh, the prizes so if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please do so I put out one or two videos per week and they're all wheel of time centric so I put out videos basically on anything and everything to do with the wheel of time show that's being produced by Sony and Amazon and if you like news rumors leaks set pictures castings all that sort of stuff I cover all of that here including any other regular wheel of time news so if you like that sort of thing subscribe to the channel and then you're automatically entered into my contests for prizes and whatnot all right, all that being said, spoiler warning, in this video I will be talking about certain aspects of The Great Hunt, that's book two of Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time series. So if you haven't read at least book one and book two, that's both the first and the second book of The Wheel of Time, be forewarned, I may spoil minor plot points and character arcs from those two books. All right, that being said, let's get on to the video. All right, so at the end of July, we got this tweet from Geeky Area and the folks over at WattSeries.com. Essentially what it is, it's a, it's a call out for a bunch of different types of extras. Now, extra casting calls, when they do come out, don't specifically go to casting agencies or actors and actresses agents. They go to the general public because, well, they're looking for extras and these people don't have to be actors or actresses. I know in my hometown, we do a lot of television productions here for a lot of the bigger channels and, and big streaming services. And when they call for extras, it pretty much goes out to everybody. And if you want to show up on set, you'll get paid and you can kind of hang out in the background and do what they tell you to. So it's kind of neat to see. This does give us a little bit of insight into where they're going into season two. Although at this point, it's pretty much accepted fact that they're going to cover at least most of The Great Hunt. That's the second book of the Wheel of Time. Now what they're looking for here is a juggler, acrobats, a snake woman, a real barber, a real puppeteer, and an Irish band with a singer. So first we'll talk about what this could mean. So the first thing that sprang to mind when I saw this was the four gate outside Kyrian. Um, I mean, we do know that they had puppeteers uh, puppeting around Trollocs during that time frame. Um, they're gonna have acrobats in, in and around, you know, the different nobles' houses and where Tom Marilyn was playing uh, in some of the inns and on the street corners. Uh, Snake Woman, probably something else they're gonna have on the, the sides of the street and stuff. So it's basically a big festival atmosphere, kind of like the buskers. They're gonna have all kinds of stuff out there and all these people will be doing things in the background. Now, what's what's kind of interesting to note here is they're looking for Irish band with a singer. So that means that they're actually gonna have a real band there playing music, which is super cool to me. Uh, a real puppeteer and a real barber. Now, a lot of people talked about that. Why would they get a real barber? Why would they get a real puppeteer? It doesn't make much sense. Honestly, I think it's because they're going for realism in the background, which bodes well for the production, in my opinion, at least anyway, because they're looking to put things in the background that people can't call out as fake. So if you have a real barber actually cutting people's hair, shaving you know beards and stuff in the background um, of one or two scenes, and they're actually doing it, that's super cool. And if you have a real puppeteer actually marionetting uh, either a CG trollock or someone in a costume, that again would be very, very cool because their movements would be realistic and people like you and me who pick it apart probably wouldn't be able to call that stuff out. So super neat. Now again, I think this is the four gate from Kyrian. It's probably uh, you know midway through the Great Hunt when they get there and they're, they're you know Rand beats up with Tom again. I think that's what we're going for here. That's my guess. But again, I'm not entirely sure because they didn't really say what scenes this was for and when they're exactly gonna shoot these scenes. So there's that. Let me know in the comments down below what you folks think. Do you think it's for the 4 gate outside Kyrie and do you think it's for maybe something different in season two? Um, I'd love to hear all of your thoughts on this. All right, let's 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 dive into all those book covers now. Um, so now we're looking at these. These are the book covers from Orbit. Uh, and there are a, a, basically a new book cover for every single book in the series. These are gonna come out later this fall, around the same time the show comes out, maybe a little bit earlier. Um, and they are pretty. We looking through this, the eye of the world. This is the new spring one. Um, you know, we're gonna get a closer look at each of them here. I'll, I'll cycle through them all as we talk. Uh, and they are very pretty. Uh, I'll give them that. Although, as a fantasy fan, they do not scream fantasy to me. And if I was someone new to the series, this would not make me want to pick it up. I mean, there's there's no way. These kind of look like very generic stock images that were thrown together quickly. And I, I say that with all respect to, to Orbit, but I don't like them very much because, I mean, while pretty, they really say nothing about the series. They, they don't scream fantasy. They don't say anything about it at all. Um, but I understand why they did it. 
So when the show comes out, it's going to attract a lot of fans. And these fans will be people who maybe generally don't read fantasy or who are embarrassed to read fantasy. I know that seems kind of like a foreign concept to some of us, uh, but there are people in the world that don't like other people to know that they read fantasy because they consider it maybe not as uh, on the up and up as other types of literature. So these books, although they are fantasy books, kind of convey something generic in the covers so you could read them in public and people wouldn't know that you're reading fantasy. Now these would scream more of a Dean Koontz type thing to me, uh, perhaps old sci-fi series, um, but they look like landscape stock images. Some of them, again, very pretty. However, they don't really scream fantasy to me. Um, so. There's, there's that. Let me know in the comments down below what you fo folks think of these book covers. Um, like I said, I don't like them. I won't be purchasing them. Uh, they won't be on the shelf behind me here. I mean, like, the Juniper book... I'm trying to, trying to figure out. I have very poor spatial awareness. You see the Juniper books in the background there. These are the actual books with the covers, so it's the full set. Uh, my wife got them for me. They're beautiful. They're immaculate. I love them. They scream fantasy. They scream wheel of time. For a fan of the series... They're amazing, but again, they're not great for somebody to pick up. But these ones here, they're not they're not screaming fantasy to me, and they're not really something I would pick up personally because they don't really convey the Wheel of Time motif, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, again, pretty, but not great to me. Um, then again, you know, we, we could argue the merits of the old covers for hours because they're not really popular with people either. <laughs> but there are some editions in between, especially the ebook editions that I thought were really, really very nice, very pretty, and they did scream fantasy and they did scream what the book series was about. So I guess these may be kind of a balance between the two, but I really honestly do think these are going to be built for people who are going to watch the show that maybe aren't regular fantasy readers that would not mind reading something like this in public because it doesn't scream that it's a fantasy type book. Again, that's my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, the other book we have is this one here. This is the tour edition of The Eye of the World. Again, I don't like it. Um, it's not something I'm used to saying here in the channel. Uh, I normally like anything and everything to do with Wheel of Time and the production. However, this particular book, uh, I would rather these books than this one. Because essentially what it is, it's the poster for the show recycled and changed just a bit. Now, when this was, this was put together, Robert Jordan's name is in red and on the top. I don't like that. The Eye of the World, uh, the international number one bestseller, on the bottom in white, on not really a super dark background. Um, they changed the poster, and we'll talk about the changes here in a second, in some subtle ways, and I don't know why, and the changes really didn't make any sense to me, and, and I want to know if anyone who's watching the channel is a graphic designer that could maybe shed some light on this in the comments down below, because I don't know. Um, and of course, we have that Prime sticker, Prime video sticker, which we have on all of these books as well. Um, but again, I don't like this because it has that weird Ouroboros in the center. Um, I know that's going to be the motif for the show. I'm not a fan of where it's placed. Um, I know they're trying to go for the light and dark of the Aes Sedai. I, I assume anyway with the clouds and the light around Moraine. Uh, she's standing on the way gate. And for those of you watching, this is 100% a way gate. Uh, there's been a lot of arguments in the comments the last couple of videos when we brought it up. No, this is a way gate. The metadata for the photo confirmed it. Uh, the official Wheel of Time account confirmed it. Uh, it's been leaked ages ago. We're talking over a year now, all the set pictures, and it, this is a way gate. This is how the way gate is going to look. Um, so she's on a way gate. It is Moraine. Now, I will say this is recognizably Moraine. So let's take a closer look at some of these changes. All right, so on the left, you have the book, and on the right, you have the poster. Now, the poster was revealed at Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con at home this year. Uh, and again, it was uh, pretty well received. I mean, people liked the poster. It was nice. It was it was a little interesting. Um, it it was essentially, after a long drought of news, it's something we got, which we were all very happy to get. Now, on the left-hand side, you have the book. Now, we're going to take a look at some of these differences here. So, the first difference we have is the coloring in the background. So, on the poster itself, the upper portion and the lower portion, there's a lot more contrast between them. So, you have a very darker sky, a very lighter area around Maureen, uh, played by Rosamund Pike, and she is very recognizably Rosamund Pike. That is that is 100% Rosamund Pike as Maureen, and done really well. I like the way the cloak looks. I like the shadows in the cloak. I like the mist and the clouds around her. Um, I like her hair blowing in the wind. Really cool looking. Really neat looking. I like it. Um, and then you see all the filaments, which people have said a number of different times. Could be Mashadar. Could be the One Power. Could be any number of different things. We're not entirely sure what they were. There's a thousand different theories out there. And you see the Waygate very noticeably disintegrating. Now, some people said, well, what if it's actually building itself? 
I don't know exactly what's going on here, but I think it's probably as she comes into, into the world or outside the way gate, it kind of forms itself or disintegrates as she goes into it. I don't know. Again, spitballing here, I have no idea. But that is the poster. On the left-hand side is the book cover. Now, the book cover is essentially just the poster recycled. They put the Ouroboros in the center, so that's the snake eating its own tail. They put the eye, uh, Robert George at the top in big red letters, which I'm not a huge fan of. It seems like a, a, a weird placement, weird coloring for, for his name. Um, and then the bottom, the eye of the world, over top of the filaments and the bottom part of the way gate. So all of that we talked about already. But let's talk about some of the changes here. So you have the sky is different. Uh, you can notice the coloring there, it's more yellow. Um, they changed it just a bit. They changed the coloring up top to be more of a purpley, bluey hue uh, leading into to darkness, um, which again, I'm not entirely sure why they did that. Maybe they thought it would pop more in the book cover rather than on a poster because it's smaller. I don't know. Uh, and then let's take a look at Moraine herself. So the facial, facial features of Moraine, of Roseman Pike, are more well-defined. You can definitely tell this is Moraine, and I think this was done on purpose. They redefined these facial features because it's going to be a small trade paperback back, trade paperback or mass market edition. Uh, both those are coming out September and October. Um, and on a smaller book, the details have to be you know, you have to be able to see them a bit better because it's it's a smaller area and the posters are quite big. So then you have the cloak. So the cloak itself, um, less fog in front of it. Um, the ripples and wrinkles in the cloak are more well-defined. Uh, and her boots underneath, again, more well-defined, more white in them. I think that, again, is because it is a book cover. It is going to be smaller. They need to make these things more well-defined. They don't want to obscure her in any way, shape, or form. Then there's her hair. Her hair looks a lot more done i guess is the best way to put it it looks more put up um it's not flowing in the wind it's not messy it looks like it, she just come out of a salon and she's kind of hanging out there um again i think that might be more of an aesthetic choice by tour it looks they thought it would look a little bit better to have uh roseman pipe pike look a little bit more um put together on the cover rather than out in the wild again not entirely sure but i want to hear your folks' thoughts down below because um again if there's any graphic designers Give me your thoughts on this because I've spoken with a few graphic designers about this particular book cover and not one of them liked it. None of them were happy and some of them said there were a number of mistakes made. Now, they never elaborated on that with me. I don't know what they would be. I'm not quite sure what they're talking about. However, if you folks know, let me know in the comments down below because I would really, really like to know because this is very interesting to me. All right, so the last thing we're going to talk about after all those book covers and I mean... I am a little disappointed that I can't say I completely love them because on the channel here, I pretty much love almost everything that's happened so far or I've understood it. Uh, one of the two. Um, the book covers, I, I guess I kind of understand them, but I don't love them at all. I definitely won't be buying uh, the, the, the show tie-in book cover or uh, the, the Orbit ones. Uh, I don't think they'll grace my shelf. I mean, the Juniper editions are amazing and there's some really nice leather bound ones on Etsy. Um, these ones are not my favorite. All right, so now we're going to get to the last piece of news, and that is the potential of narrowing down the release date. So Watt Series uh, tweeted this out, and mid-November was just mentioned as a release time frame by someone connected to the show. Now, I did talk to WattSeries.com, and they let me know that it was someone connected to one of the cast members, but they would not elaborate any further than that, um, and that it was put out there and quickly taken down. So it was taken away, so it's not out there any longer. Um, so that narrows the purpose for your time off planning purposes. So essentially, mid-November is what we're looking at here, which... You know, that makes a lot of sense. The books are coming out September, October, and early November. Um, I have said a number of times that I've heard that a Black Friday release is is, is the best potential for one. Um, a lot of people have been saying that for months and months and months to me, that they believe it's Black Friday. They've been told it's Black Friday. Um, this kind of shifts it just a bit to the left of Black Friday because Black Friday is closer to the end of the month than the mid-month. But if it's mid-month, fantastic. I'm happy with earlier. I mean, I would like the show to come out tomorrow. Uh, and I would watch the first episode a million times and then make half a dozen videos on it because I'm so excited to see it. But, um, again, they did say it was someone connected to one of the cast members. It's not up any longer, so you can go searching for it. You won't find it. But it is looking like a mid-November release, which is really very cool. I'm, I'm pretty pumped about that. Let me know what you folks think down the below in the comments. All right, uh, so the last thing we're going to talk about is the uh, contest. So if you made it this far in the video, you're probably already a subscriber, or perhaps you're finding me for... for you know, the first time. But if you're not a subscriber, you're not entered. So essentially, how you enter this contest is subscribe to my channel, like my videos, and comment on them. So starting last video, basically every comment is an, every comment on each video is an entry. So if you comment a thousand times in one video, it's not really a thousand entries. I mean, somebody would do that and just kind of 
break the bank, I guess. <laughs> but if you comment on the video, you comment on this video and the next video, they're each entries into it. And I'm gonna use a random number generator to pick one person who's commented on the video since last video until about two weeks after I hit 10,000 subscribers. And if that person does like the videos and they are a subscriber to the channel, then they win the prize. Now, what's the prize? If you haven't already seen the trailer, I put it up on my TikTok. Uh, speaking of which, go see me on TikTok. That's where I do all my silly kind of funny things. Um, I put it up on uh, Instagram and over on Twitter and it's on my Facebook, but uh, I will show it pretty much in every video until I hit 10,000 subscribers, just so you folks can see these amazing prizes that were done by one of the members of Twitter time, Arini. And I've left a link to Arini's Instagram down below in the comment section or in the description box rather. Uh, so go follow her over on Instagram. She does all kinds of great 3D modeling and all kinds of great artwork. Go check her out. She's absolutely amazing. Uh, she did make the models for these and the files for these. I'm just going to print them. So there's that. Uh, people have been asking, can you buy them? No, I won't sell these. Uh, they are they were given me specifically for making uh, for the prize for 10,000 subscribers. So it's not going to be a whole lot of sets of them out there. Irini will have a, a few, of course, because she made the files and she can print as many of them as she likes. I'll print one for the prize winner, print one for myself, and that'll pretty much be it. So it's the only way to get this is by hoping you win by being a subscriber to the channel. All right, let's take a look at the trailer. Pretty cool. I'm, I mean, every time I see it, I'm blown away. Um, I want to thank uh, Ben. I've left his Twitter down below in the description box. He's the one who made the trailer for me and my brother. He's the one who did the music for me. Um, if you remember, he actually did the music for my uh, Dragon uh, video for the music contest that uh, the Watt parody music contest that me, Matt Hatch and Lauren had uh, a while ago now. Um, he, he's really very musically talented. I want to thank him for that too. Um, but Cool trailer, really cool prizes. I'm in the process of printing them. I mean, I have, it's pairing right there. Test, of course, not the final product. The final product will look much nicer than that. It's gonna be in, in really nice uh, silver, uh, but I made a test run of all of them. Worked out really well. Uh, so now I'm, I'm starting to print the final products. So over the next few videos, you may see a couple of final products. I may hold them up here and there, but really, really cool. Um, only way to get them is to be a subscriber. All right. Thank you so much for sticking with me here to the very end, and uh, here's to many more.